After my previous video on PA Mix, I had a bunch of people say, hey, what about Pulse Mixer? What about Pulse Mixer? What about Pulse Mixer? And that's what we're going to be looking at today. So if you missed that video, what Pulse Mixer is, is an end cursor application to control your Pulse Audio devices. And it seems to be far, far more polished than PA Mix. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do and let's jump right into it. So first up, we're going to have a look at the GitHub page and then we're going to get right into the application. So this is what it looks like, nothing too special. You need to have Python installed and obviously you need to have Pulse Audio installed because otherwise, what's the point of having a Pulse Audio control if you don't have Pulse Audio? But anyway, if you want to install it, you can install it through curl or you can install it through pip or your other option. And this is why it's also better than PA Mix. If we go onto my terminal, sudo pacman dash s and then pulse mixer. It is available in the standard repos on Arch Linux. So if you're on Arch, then you can install it like that. I don't know about other distros. It might be available on like the Ubuntu standard repos. I have no idea. I don't use Ubuntu, maybe void or anything like that. I don't know. I just use Arch though. So this is what the program looks like, at least if you have like a white terminal background and here are the controls. So we'll keep this open just because it's easier to see the controls like that. So if you just write in pulse mixer, I've also got it bound to uh, super alt P. That's what I was going to do before, but we'll, we'll go through this method first. So it behaves in a very similar way to PA mix, but it has some nice changes that make it a bit more easier to use. So you've got a couple of different tabs. You've got your output tab, you've got your input tab, and you've also got your cards tab. Now, the one difference between this and PA Mix in another way is it doesn't actually show your live audio level. So if we bring up uh, PA Mix, as we will see when I'm talking, it actually shows like what my levels look like. So PA Mix is still very useful for when I'm doing like live recordings and things like that, because I can actually see when stuff is clipping. Now, I can still see that on like OBS and I can see that on various other places, but it is nice to be able to see all my audio levels moving in one location. So that is the one drawback of using Pulse Mixer over PA Mix, but it's not a really big deal. There are other audio monitoring programs, so I could use one of those, or I could just use PA Mix for the audio monitoring and then use this pretty much any other time. So you can jump between each of these with the keys that it has up here. So F1, F2, F3 makes sense or you could tab through them, which is also nice. So you can go tab or you can go shift tab. I'll bring up screen key just so it's a bit easier for you guys to actually see. So it also has Vim controls. So you can go J and K to go up and down and then L and H will modify your audio level. So that's pretty standard stuff. You could also use your arrow keys if you want to, or you have the option of using your mouse for certain things. So scrolling up will raise your audio level. Scrolling down will lower your audio level. I think you can click, no, oh yes you can. You can click on these devices as well. It's a little bit slow, at least with ST, but that just might be an ST problem with the way it handles mice. So you can click on each of these if you want to. I would recommend just using your keyboard because you're using a terminal anyway. Might as well just use your keyboard. So what else can we actually do here? So if you notice this little arrow on the side here, I think by default, it'll be an asterisk. I've actually changed it in the config file, but this will actually show which device is my default device. So if we want to change that, what we can do is press enter on one of these and it brings up a context menu. So this will give you a couple of things like suspend, resume, set as default and set port. So if we click set as default, as we'll see, this moves over here. So now if I was to restart my system, my Blue Yeti would be my default output device, which I obviously don't want because then I'll have no audio because I don't obviously plug my headphones into my Blue Yeti. That's not a great idea. So we'll set my built-in audio back to my default device. So there's a couple other things we saw in there. So suspend, resume, and set port. So what does set port do? So if we click on that, as we'll see, it brings up two different things in here. So we've got, I'll bring it a bit bigger. So it has speakers and headphones. So when I plug in headphones to my laptop, it will switch automatically over to headphones. But if I want to change the headphones right now, then I can do that. So if we do that, then I would have no audio actually coming out of my inbuilt speakers. But if I plugged in these ones, then they would be coming out of my uh, headphone port. And the same is true if you obviously have the headphones plugged in first. If you have the headphones plugged in first, I believe it should automatically switch over to headphones. Now, it should, assuming that Pulse Audio doesn't break. I haven't had any problems with it though. It's pretty much always switched over for me. 
So what about this suspend and resume? So if we go over to my second screen, I've actually got some audio over here. So if I click play on this, you'll hear that there's actually a video now. Okay, so if we go back over here and we click enter on this device and then we click suspend, now we'll notice that we have no more audio. So if I go back over here, no matter what I do, this audio isn't actually gonna keep going. So the video keeps going, but there's no audio for it. So if I go back over and I click resume on this, now we have audio back. So I'll go and pause this, but basically what that's gonna do is pause an audio device. So it will say, stop outputting audio and the one problem I have with it in here is there's no indication that you've actually suspended a device. So if you accidentally suspend something, you might not notice that it's actually suspended in this program. So that's a bit of a problem with working with this. Generally, you're not gonna suspend devices though, so it's not a big deal, but on the off chance you do, there's no indication in here that you've actually done it. So when I was playing that video, you may have noticed I had this thing down here which showed my playback settings. So in PA Mix, if you wanted to move this device to say your Blue Yeti to output from that, the way you do this is with this really clunky menu where you press S and it would just cycle through the devices. With this, it's way better. So if we are actually selected on the playback device or the, uh, the playback settings and we press enter, this brings up a different context menu. So I can kill it, which will basically do exactly what you expect it to do, which will just basically kill that process or kill that audio stream, I guess. Or we could go move. So if I press enter on here, now it'll say select a new audio device. So if I go down to the Blue Yeti and I press enter, as we'll see, that's now moved from my built-in audio to the Blue Yeti. So now it's gonna be trying to output through the headphone jack on my Blue Yeti. So we can move that back as well. So just press enter on here, go move, move it back to my default device. And now it's gonna be outputting through here. So you can also change the audio levels on this. So same way we were doing it before. I didn't mention this earlier, but you can also use the number keys to change your audio levels. So if we press one, that'll do 10%, zero, that'll do 100, five, that'll do 50. I think it's pretty obvious. Just take the number, stick a zero on it, except for zero, which is set to 100. So that's just a nice thing as well to have there. You can do that on pretty much any track. So anything that has an audio level, you can modify with your number keys. One thing I also didn't mention earlier is you can actually mute a track. So if we press M, that will then gray out the track and this will say basically that's muted and down the bottom here It also shows a red M when it's actually muted. That's default settings You can change that and I'll show you that in just a moment But that's how it looks by default and on something that's not muted. It'll show a white M So if you want to unmute this just press M again And there's also an L down here But you don't press L to unlock the track the way you do that is by pressing space so as we'll see, it moved from having two lines there all the time to just having one line. So now you can select which track you want to actually modify. So let's say we wanted to modify the level of the bottom audio track, which I believe is that is the right channel. So bottom track is the right channel, top track is the left channel. And if we lock it again, unlike PA Mix, it doesn't pick an average level between the two. It will just keep them at the exact same level. So now I've got 70% on my left channel and 80% on my right channel. So you probably wanna have those at the same thing unless you have hearing problems or you have some speaker problems. Generally, you're going to wanna have your audio levels the same for both speakers. That's pretty much everything for the main program, but there's a couple other things I wanted to mention. So if we go to the GitHub page, right down here, so there's a bit of a help menu. You can get this as well on the terminal by just going uh, pulse mixer dash H. There's no man page for it, at least at this stage. So you're gonna have to do it like this. So what you can do here is you can actually use pulse mixer, not just as an interactive control for your pulse audio devices, but you can also use it to do your CLI controls. So that means you can use it in place of something like PACTL to do all of your, say, hotkey bindings. So that's another really nice thing to do. There's a few examples on here as well. So if you want to know how to use it, go through these examples. They're all pretty, pretty good. If you want to set an audio device volume level or you want to do other stuff like that, then there's some examples in here and the documentation is pretty straightforward. The names of all of these options is pretty straightforward as well. So you should be able to work it out yourself. One thing to keep in mind is you have to use the dash dash ID option to select which device you want to modify. You don't do something like get volume and then the ID of the device. You have to do dash dash ID, the ID, dash dash get volume, and then you can actually get the volume. Now the last thing to mention is the configuration file. So if you want to generate that, you can go pulse mixer dash dash create dash config and then it'll put the config file in .config slash pulsemixer.cfg. Now I've already made this, so we'll have a look at my one. I've actually changed it a little bit from the default settings. So pulse mixer, I haven't changed it a ton, but I have changed it a little bit. So my key bindings are still the exact same. 
I'm still running like the same color and stuff. So I didn't show you that earlier though. Uh, if you want to run this without color, you can go pulse mixer dash dash color and then go zero and that'll run it with no color. Or you can set that in the configuration file. So if you change color in here from two, which is run at full color to zero, which is run at no color, then that will basically do that. You can also set it to one, which will run at the currently selected color. I'm not sure what one means. Generally, you're just gonna run it with zero or two. So one nice thing you can do is you can actually change how the bars look in here. So if, if I just bring that back up, you'll notice in here they use like straight bars, but you can actually change that pretty easily. So let's just do that quickly. So change that over. Yeah, I know someone's probably gonna hate me for the fact that I use Vim multi-cursor. I generally don't care. I like multi-cursor, it's nice. Anyway, now we've changed over to like a curled bar with like little diamonds in here and dots to show the audio levels. Personally, I'm not a big fan of this. I prefer the other way, but if you do want to change it over to this, then that is an option you can do. You can obviously use any other characters you want as well. So if you want to have like asterisks for everything, do it, it doesn't matter. You're free to do whatever you want. But I would probably recommend sticking with the default settings. They just look the best in my opinion. But as I said, you can do what you want. I've also changed the default stream icon from being an asterisk to being a greater than sign. You might disagree with me that it looks better, but personally, I like the look of this myself, so that's what I'm gonna stick with. And one thing I was trying out earlier is actually switching over the L's and the M's over to like emojis or hack nerd font. So let's just have a look at how that looks. So I think this person looks pretty good. I did notice that occasionally it might break, so down the bottom here, when I was testing it early, it was actually removing this first character, but it doesn't seem to be doing it anymore, so I don't actually know what just happened. I don't know why it broke before and it's not breaking now. I didn't change anything, I didn't update anything. It's just started working, so I'm not sure. I did something, I, I have no idea. Anyway, you can use emojis or like hack nerd font stuff down here if you want to. I think it looks a bit better, to be honest. I just wasn't running it before because it was breaking. I was expecting to say that it breaks all the time, but I guess not now. Now the last thing you might wanna do is actually really, really cool. So you can actually rename the stream. So by default, my C920 Pro is named Orbicam. I don't know why, there's some reason why it's named Orbicam, but you can actually do a regex search and rename it to something else. And this can be done with pretty much anything. So if we pick anything in here, like let's say this built-in audio, so we could change the built-in analog audio or built-in audio analog, whatever it is, to something more like audio controller. So if I close this and I reopen it, as we can see, my built-in audio has now been renamed to audio controller. So I think that's actually a pretty nice addition as well. So some things just get named really weirdly, like in Firefox, I'm not sure when this happens, but apparently there's something called an audio IPC server and you're not really gonna know what that is unless you know exactly what that is. So you might wanna swap that over to something else. Or with my case, obviously you had the Orbicam, which is actually my C920 Pro. I might rename the Blue Yeti because the name is a little ridiculous in some places. Like if we go over to input two, monitor of Yeti stereo microphone analog stereo. That's a ridiculous name, probably gonna change that. So I could do that very easily with the renames in here. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. Now. I wish I knew about Pulse Mixer before, but I think it does help that I tried out a program that is considerably worse. Now, I don't think PA Mix is a bad program, but if I'm gonna compare it to Pulse Mixer, I think that overall Pulse Mixer is a far more polished program. Now, I do like that PA Mix has the audio channel monitoring with the, uh, the bar that moves every time sound comes out. That is a nice addition. I wish Pulse Mixer had that. It's not a big deal. I can kind of get used to it because I do have my audio levels in different places like on OBS and like on uh, Discord and stuff like that. But I would like to have something like that in Pulse Mixer. Apart from that, really I don't actually have a reason to run PA Mix. That's the only thing that would really still get me using PA Mix. So I reckon I'm going to stick with Pulse Mixer at least for now. So I think that's pretty much everything for this. So if you like this video then remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, then remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my social links. That'll be my Discord, my Telegram, and all of that sort of stuff. I noticed that after I did my video on Discord the other day, I had a massive growth in that Discord. So that's awesome. 
come check it out if you want to. And I've also got my support links down below, so if you want to support the channel, then I've got my Patreon and various other links like that, so go check those out if you do want to support the channel. But as always, if you don't want to, then you don't have to, but any help will be really appreciated. And lastly, I've got my alternate video platform, so it'll be my BitTube and my library. So go check those out if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.